yesterday, what are your reactions to what unfolded yesterday in, in Washington? Well, let me tell you what we saw yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and that was a sudden, uh, an attempt at least, at a sudden violent and illegal seizure of power from the government. Uh, Webster's uh, dictionary, um, that's the definition of a coup. Uh, and if you disagree with that phraseology, uh, here's another word that fits, uh, insurrection. And we all know what that means. But if you ask me, you got to move to the T's in the, in, in the dictionary uh, for the best word to describe what we saw, and that's terrorism. We saw domestic terrorists who were attempting to overthrow our government uh, for political philosophies. Uh, it's unacceptable, and it's something that has to be condemned by all leaders. Have you had an opportunity to communicate with any of your uh, uh, colleagues um, or our representatives from Nevada that were there yesterday? Absolutely. Uh, and during the pendency of that turmoil and of that terroristic attack, uh, I communicated with all of our members of the delegation, uh, wishing them well, letting them know that I was praying for their safety and receiving information back from them uh, that was terrifying. Uh, and again, this has to be condemned uh, roundly and by everyone. And as, as you were seeing it unfold on t television um, and, and just everything on social media, what was going through your mind? This is something that we knew was gonna happen. Uh, listen, I have been saying forever that Donald Trump's dog whistles to his supporters were dangerous. Um, from him saying that he would not commit to an orderly transition of power, uh, to him saying that he wanted uh, his people to go watch closely at the polls, uh, which was a signal for voter intimidation. From him telling certain people to stand back and stand by, uh, I knew what his intentions were and what they have always been. We've known this since this gentleman was a candidate, and frankly, since he was a civilian um, rooting for racist philosophies and ideologies. And at the end of the day, what we saw yesterday was hopefully the culmination and the end of a tumultuous time period in our nation's history. Uh, if it is the beginning of additional uprisings, we need to be prepared for that. And what is your reaction to um, politicians who are defending the president, saying that he did nothing wrong, that he uh, it's like, hey, it's freedom of speech and, and that sort of thing, and thing that he's not responsible for what happened yesterday when it went into chaos. I've been reminding folks uh, since the beginning that this man told us who he was from the beginning. We should have believed him. Uh, his dog whistles were loud and clear, but people didn't want to hear it. Uh, hopefully they believe him now and they hear these dog whistles. It's been existential since he was a candidate. Uh, he began his candidacy by uh, calling Mexicans and their descendants rapists. Uh, he went on to say that uh, women could be grabbed wherever he wanted to. Um, and then, then the, one of the first orders of business for him was to tell Muslims they couldn't travel. It's been existential for Mexican descendants and for immigrants. It's been existential for women. It's been existential for Muslims. It's been existential for people who look like me and my Jewish brothers and sisters when he has said that there were good people on both sides of Charlottesville. Uh, not to mention some of the idiotic policies that he has promoted uh, over the course of his four-year tenure. Um, a new day is coming, uh, and I call it hashtag J20, and I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and yesterday, um, you know, the Cap Capitol Police were overpowered by the crowd, and uh, some people are saying that there was not enough uh, security there, and security there was different from security from you know the BLM protests uh, that that took place in DC um, do you do you believe that there was a difference in security no question uh, I tweeted earlier that there are many dynamics to the insurrection to the terroristic attack that we experienced yesterday and one of those dynamics is the racial dynamic both in terms of preparation for what was to become a terroristic attack and in response to it I can guarantee you that had the individuals been of a different color or Muslims, we would have more than one individual killed, unfortunately. And at the end of the day, we have to do more than um, um, be re re reactive to these types of things and be proactive to ensure that everyone is treated fairly under the law. Uh, and this is proof positive of the fact that what Black Lives Matter protesters have been uh, talking about is actual in our existence. Um. And I just want to ask you about, about a tweet that you tweeted uh, a little bit ago uh, this afternoon, um, like saying that there's a lot of dynamics to yesterday's insurrection and then 
but beyond acknowledging the different treatment, we must defeat it. What do you mean by the different treatment? Again, the different treatment is apparent. You can juxtapose pictures of uh, the preparation that law enforcement undertook um, in June of last year when Black Lives Matters, the peaceful protesters who were attempting to be there, to be sure they were accompanied by people who co-opted that message, some of which uh, across the nation have been uh, engaging in non-peaceful protests and they should be addressed. But look at the juxtaposition of how they prepared with people, uh, with, with officers who were um, dressed in tactical gear to the preparation to yesterday. Uh, and also look at the fact that people who uh, gathered in our nation's capital last summer were tear gassed. Uh, were moved out of the way so that our president could have a photo op when in the instance on last night we didn't even see people being arrested for violating the curfew uh, and so again recognizing the difference is one thing defeating what we've been seeing is something entirely different and we have to commit ourselves to that and what does it say about the state of our nation where we're at and and where we need to go well the state of our nation is such that we have um a vast majority of our country, just as we did last time, frankly, uh, that believe in equality, that believe in principles uh, of, of treating people fairly. And I am happy, again, that we have elected um, a individual and a vice president who will look to build back better. And I'm proud of our country in that regard. But we've got a lot of work to do. And it takes, again, more than recognition. It takes hard work. Uh, and I'm willing to do that and I'm willing to work with anyone, regardless of political strife, regardless of race, regardless of religion, regardless of beliefs, who is dedicated to that proposition as well. Yeah. Uh, where do we go from here? Uh, you know, what, what can we do here in Nevada? I know that I'm sure that a lot of people are frustrated and, and have a lot of anxiety and they want to do something, but they don't quite know what to do. Um, what can we do? We've heard a lot of, about what we can do. Um, it's not new to us. Uh, we heard John Lewis always say, get in good trouble. Uh, and to, if you saw something bad happening, speak up and speak out. Uh, we've heard uh, our newest senator from Georgia talking about a new day coming after this darkness. And what we need to do is to recommit ourselves to affiliating ourselves with an improved future. Uh, and that means confronting these issues head on, having more than conversation about them and actually implementing practices and policies that demonstrate that we are in fact one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Um, after, uh, or on January 20th and, and the days after, are you, are you hopeful that, that things can become better for us? Absolutely. One of the things that I said yesterday was what we saw yesterday was darkness and broad daylight, uh, but that a new day is coming. And I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic about that new day. Uh, at 12.01 on January 20th, we will have a new administration that is committed to equality and to bringing our country back together and restoring the soul of our nation. And I'm all about that. And uh, last thing here, do you have, do you have a message for the people of Nevada um, on, on just the current situation. Absolutely. Uh, and the message is the same one that I had as a candidate. Uh, I will be and have been, in my estimation, an attorney general who looks out for all of the Nevada family. Uh, whether you've been here three generations or three weeks, you're part of the Nevada family. Uh, whether you are married with two and a half kids or a single parent with three kids, you're part of the Nevada family. Whether you're gay or straight, you're part of the Nevada family. And it is up to this office, the Office of Attorney General, where our job is justice to ensure that the Nevada family is protected in every aspect of our lives. I'm committed to doing that. And I appreciate and am blessed to be the one in the position right now to help us through this tumultuous time. 